it's so nice to meet you. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thanks, me. I'm Michael Oliver Weinberg. I'm an adjunct professor at Columbia Business School in finance and economics. Okay, great. So I wanted to ask you, what are your views on the alternative industry? Um, is it mature? Is it growing? Yeah. Look, um, I started in the hedge fund industry in 1998 at Soros Fund Management. And at that time, hedge funds were nascent. They were tiny. Since then, the growth has been exponential. I mean, I would say hedge funds are largely mature, but where the growth is, is in private credit. That will be growing materially, prospectively, uh, as the, for, for various reasons. We, we probably don't have time to go into them in this interview, but w long story short, hedge funds mature, uh, private credit will continue to grow. To that extent, I'm uh, very involved in AMA's uh, Alternative Credit Council. All right, great. So next question, um, what do you think about ESG? ESG is obviously very controversial. In fact, in the U.S., it's almost become polarized, red state, blue state. Um, I think it can be very effective, but you need to implement what we call optimal ESG. Um, for example, engagement, not exclusion. Um, there, so there are many nuances to it. I mean, let's look at governance, governance right? The G part of ESG. I, I think it's hard for anyone to say that you don't prefer better governance to worse governance. So. I think, unfortunately, it's become highly politicized, but it can add a lot of value and it can be very valuable if implemented well. And I've, I've you know, I've written articles on this um, on what we call optimal ESG, um, for example, again, um, engaging, not excluding and even potentially shorting laggards. So you in, invest in leaders, um, you may engage with laggards and if they don't improve, you may even short them uh, anyway. It's a very long topic, but we unfortunately probably don't have time for that. <laughs> no worries. Um, I also wanted to know, um, what's your views on investment opportunity sets? Yeah, the, my view on the investment opportunity set is um, there's a great opportunity now in private equity secondaries, uh, private credit, per, uh, particularly um, stressed, distressed, I think will be a fabulous opportunity set prospectively. Um, I think VC is interesting again, having largely been washed out other than AI. I think there's sort of a mini bubble in AI VC, but outs and, and I would also avoid late stage uh, VC. Um, you know, if you look for instance, Instacart recently came public 75% down from its recent valuation, but, but g broadly in VC, I do think there's a great opportunity set. And it's a great time for those that have capital to invest, whether it's stress, distressed private credit, as I mentioned, um, v VC, non-AI, non-late stage. Um, I think also stress distressed real estate will be an immense opportunity set. And lastly, private equity secondaries. All right, thank you so much for that. Um, so there are new SEC private fund rules and um, I'd like to know your thoughts on that. Sure, uh, I've been on the board of AMA, uh, the Alternative Investment Management Association, which is a not-for-profit organization uh, that's focused on the alternative in industry. Um, currently, I'm on the AMA's Global Investor Board, and we, the MFA, and really all of the world's largest um, organi organizations revolving investment management, um, believe that this rule is not in the interests of all parties, particularly beneficiaries and investors, and also uh, fund managers. So we are challenging this in the fifth, this, the, the new SEC private fund rules in the Fifth Circuit Court. Um, and our view is, um, you know, again, having f formerly, for example, I was uh, running capital for a very large Dutch pension, APG. And, you know, our view was to look out for the beneficiaries. And similarly, if I were to put my hat on as though I were there or at any pension looking after beneficiaries, my view is this rule is not in beneficiaries' best interest necessarily. So we're challenging those rules at this moment. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask, um, what's your views on the China's economic situation? Yeah, look, um, I've been investing in China for multiple decades. Um, proponent of China, been there, spent much considerable time there. I um, think it's super interesting, and I think there are inefficiencies there that are interesting to invest in. That said, I think there are four challenges um, that they, they are now faced with, and, and they're really excesses. Real estate, infrastructure, manufacturing, and natural resources. Uh, they've invested considerably in all four of these areas over the past decades, and 
you know, I think it's a bit like Japan was pre-1989 or the U.S. was pre-global financial crisis in 2007. Uh, they have these four excesses and they're, they're going to pose quite a challenge for their economy prospectively. Um, so I think it, it, it's, again, a lot like Japan in 89 or the U.S. pre-GFC. All right. Thank you so much. So my last question for you is, um, what's your opinion on AI uh, pertaining to investment management? Yeah, look, uh, just hosted a panel for Beryl Leeds and VDAC and here uh, on AI, LLMs, large learning models and, um, and GPT. Uh, some years ago, I founded a company or co-founded, I should say, sorry, a company called Move 37. MOV 37, and the concept was machine learning and alternative data would revolutionize investment management. In fact, we called them autonomous learning investment strategies. And here we are some years later, right, seven years later, and that's exactly what's happening. And I think- That's amazing. This, yeah, yeah, right? Uh, it, thank you. Um, I, 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 I think our hypothesis was correct that this confluence of four factors, uh, exponential growth in data, machine learning, um, data science and record low uh, processing and storage costs would revolutionize investment management. And that's exactly what we're seeing where uh, all investment managers will have to adapt and include uh, machine learning and alternative data. Otherwise they'll risk being, uh, you know, d effectively disintermediated or um, uh, uh, obviated by those that do. So I, I think it's here to stay and it'll be imperative. Thank you so much. That'll be all for today. Thank you, Nick. All right.